Hey, it's Andy with IT Supplies. We talk all the time about RIP software. We sell at least eight different RIPs. We install these programs and train new customers to use them every week. But to tell you the truth, I didn't actually know exactly how a RIP software worked until I did some research this week. Today, we're going to do a little nerding out to understand what actually happens when you send an image through your RIP software into your printer. So stay tuned. First, let's start with the name. Why RIP software? RIP stands for Raster Image Processor Software. A RIP is a type of software used to process digital print files in order to produce high quality printed output like what you see on a canvas or a poster. A RIP software takes your digital file, such as a PDF or other file format, and translates it into a format that can be understood by a printer. The format that can be understood by a printer is a raster image, which is made up of a grid or matrix of dots. The RIP divides the image into this grid by using a series of small individual elements called pixels, each of which can be assigned a specific color. The RIP software accomplishes this by analyzing the digital print file and determining how many pixels are needed to accurately represent the image. To create pixels, the RIP software uses a process called halftoning, which involves breaking the image down into a series of small dots of varying sizes and colors. The software uses mathematical algorithms to determine the optimal placement and size of these dots, ensuring that the final printed output accurately represents the original digital image. Side note. We talk a lot about custom profiles. By creating a custom profile, the RIP software can be provided with more accurate and detailed information about the color gamut of the printer, the resolution of the printing substrate, and other factors that can affect the quality of the printed result. This allows the halftoning conversion in the software to make more accurate calculations and produce a printed result that more closely matches the original image. That is why it's always best to have a custom profile created for your paper and printer combination so that the RIP can do its best work. But even with a custom profile, this conversion process isn't perfect. Often the digital image contains a greater range of colors or shades of gray than can be accurately reproduced on the printer and paper that is being used. When this happens, the halftoning process must make approximations and substitutions, resulting in errors. There are several different halftoning techniques that RIP softwares will use to compensate for these errors. Two of the common ones are dithering and error diffusion. Without getting too far into the weeds, these different methods determine how to distribute these conversion errors over the other pixels in the grid so that the printed output most accurately represents the digital file. Dithering involves creating the raster image by evenly distributing a series of dots over the entire image. This is the fastest conversion of the two types and would take the least amount of time to RIP. Error diffusion, on the other hand, is more computationally intensive because it involves processing each pixel individually and spreading the conversion errors over nearby pixels, resulting in smoother print with finer details. All of this is happening in a matter of moments. I've always been frustrated by how long it takes to rip a file when I just want to make a print. Understanding all that is happening behind the scenes gives me a little more patience as I wait for my computer to do this work. This is why it is so important to look at the recommended specs from each RIP manufacturer if you want to have the quickest and best results when you're ripping files. I started this video by talking about the 8 plus RIPs that we sell. All of them accomplish the same basic function of converting a digital file into a raster file that can be understood by printers. But each RIP has a different interface, a different screening method, different supported devices, different color engines, and different features. It's important to find the right RIP for your print environment and your needs. Maybe you've been using the same RIP forever, but haven't really evaluated your other options. To learn more about which RIP is best for you, find us at itsupplies.com and give us a call. We'll be glad to talk you through your production needs and make a recommendation. If you found this content helpful and would like more nerdy videos like this, then give us a like and comment below. Thanks for watching and have a great day.